You can create user-defined features at the assembly level consisting of multiple components to facilitate the placement of those components later on. Let's take a look at an example of this. Here I have an assembly open, it's got an electronics case, and then I have a whole bunch of different components in here for cabling. I've got a receptacle, I've got a plug, I've got a couple of back shells for each, and then I've got all the different fasteners in order to fix them in the assembly. Now, I could create this at as a subassembly, but I don't want this to be a subassembly. I want this to be a group of components that exist at this assembly level. Because in reality, I wouldn't be creating this as a separate assembly and then adding it in at a higher level. So that's why I'm going to use an assembly level user defined feature. The first thing that I'm going to do is set my working directory because this is going to be stored out on my computer. So I just want to make sure that it ends up in my folder of UDFs. So let me go to where I have that on my computer. I have a folder, C Creo UDF. That's where I want it to be stored. So I'm going to set that as my working directory. Now let's go to the tools tab. To create a user defined feature, you're going to use the UDF library command. Then you'll get the menu manager. Here we, we have the ability to create a new user defined feature. And we have an information window that opens up where we can enter in the name of this UDF. And I'm going to call this my connector group and then hit the enter key. Now we have a choice. Do we want this to be standalone or subordinate? Standalone means that it's not going to be dependent on this particular assembly. But if you choose subordinate, then you are going to get a reference model that can open up to help someone place this in a model later on. And I'm probably 50-50 depending on whether I choose standalone or subordinate. In this case, I'm going to choose subordinate and I will click done. Now we have the model dialog box that's used to create the UDF. And you can see all the different things that we can define in here. The first thing that we're prompted is to select the features or components that we want to add to the UDF. And I'm gonna select this feature over here hold down the shift key and then pick the last feature. So that way I end up getting a total of 20 selected. Let me click OK and then done and done return. Now it's highlighting different references in the model. I can see highlighted right here and I have the ability to write a prompt for that reference. And I'm going to say that this is my cylindrical surface. Next, it's highlighting the placement surface. And now it's highlighting another surface. I'm a little too zoomed in, but I happen to know based on how I assembled the components, it is the top surface for orientation. And now it's highlighting the opposite wall surface for the fasteners. And so now I'm going to zoom out and I can review the prompts. Let me click next. And so there we have the, uh, let's see the prompt for this one. Let me choose next. And so there we have, that's that third surface. That's the top surface. I'm just going to hit done return to finish the prompts. And that's all that you need to do in order to set up an assembly user defined feature. You can do other things like have variable elements or variable dimensions, variable parameters. You can make a family table of this and you can also add pro program in here as well. I am going to add some variable dimensions. So I will double click on that element in the dialog box and we have three different uh, angle dimensions here and I want those to be variable so that someone can have different clocking of the plug and the back shells later on. And since I want all of them, I'm going to choose select all and done return and then done. And now it's highlighting one of the dimensions on here. And so I'm going to say for this prompt, this will be my receptacle, back shell, clocking, angle. 
The next one is the clocking angle of the plug. And now we have the plug back shell clocking angle. And so there I have my variable dimensions defined in here as well. This is good. I will click the OK button and it's prompting me to save stuff. I'll go and click OK. That is fine. And then done return out of here. Let me repaint the screen and then zoom out. Let's take a look at placing that UDF in this same model. Now I will go to the model tab. Here we have the user defined feature command and it automatically goes to my group directory. That's the folder on my computer that is pointed to by the config.pro option pro underscore group underscore dir. Here is the UDF I just created. I'll click the open button. And we have view source model grayed out because this is actually the same source model. And here we have advanced reference configuration checked. That's necessary so you can locate these different features in the model or components rather. Let me click the OK button. And now we have four different prompts that we have to fill in. And the first one it wants to know is, hey, what's the cylindrical surface we want to use? And then it automatically advances to the placement surface. Let me pick this surface over here. Now the top surface for orienting the first component. And now the opposite wall surface. I'm going to use query select, tap the right mouse button to get the back surface. And that way, it tells us now we have succeeded in locating the components. At this point, you can hit the check mark or you could go to the other different tabs. So for example, here we have the different variables and here I have the receptacle back shell clocking angle. Maybe I want a value of 45 for that one. And then for this third one over here, maybe the other back shell I want clocked at 90 degrees. So that is good. And just to know these different dimensions that I have that I can modify. These were dimensions that came from the assembly constraints when I initially located the components in the model. So be aware that you can't change individual component dimensions, but you can have those different dimensions that were part of your assembly constraints. There's an options tab if you want to scale different things. You can also make the different dimensions available for people to modify later on. That's what unlock means over here. That means that later on someone can use the edit dimensions command to change those different clocking angles. You could lock them so that people couldn't change those dimensions later on. Or you could use the hide option so that if someone goes to edit dimensions, they're not even going to be able to see those different dimensions in the group. And we don't have any adjustments in here, so that's why it's grayed out. And from the properties tab, you can change the name of the local group that's going to be created in your model tree. I'm happy with this. Let's hit the check mark. And there we have, again, a group of components. And if I expand it, that way, quickly and easily assemble 20 other different components into my model. Let's take a look at assembling this in a different assembly. And so here I have a model. Uh, let me create an, a feature UDF for a, another uh, place to mount these components. So I will go to the Tools tab. And actually, first, before I place a UDF, I want to activate the component that I want to place the features in. So I will select the part and then use the activate command from the mini toolbar. Now from the model tab, looks like I'm in part mode because the component is activated. Let's choose user defined feature and I've got a panel cutout UDF. Let me choose the open button and now I can choose which of my family table instances in my part level UDF I want to use. I want a C shell rear mounted connector. Let me choose open after I select that. Here I have the option to view a source model because the source model was saved. Again, it's really convenient for seeing how I want to place something. And so right now we're defining a on surface coordinate system. So I'll pick the surface. And then I can right mouse click and activate my offset references collector. I want a dimension from this top surface. Hold down the control key and pick this other surface over here. 
Ah, let me change the dimensions. And I created this part level UDF in another video, so I recommend you take a look at that one if you want to see more about part level UDFs. Now I need the placement surface for the cutout and then the top surface to orient the features. And so now this all succeeded, I can hit the check mark. So now that I have my panel cut out, let's place a, another user defined. Oh, actually, let me cancel out of here. Right now the part is still active. Let me activate the assembly. Now I'll be able to place my connector group in here. So double click on the connector group and let's choose to click the OK button. And now for my cylindrical surface, I will pick this one over here. Here's my placement surface. Let's pick our top surface and then the opposite wall. Let me pick that one over there and then hit the check mark. So again, now that I have my assembly UDF, quickly and easily place a number of different components in here. Here you can see the group of components and I can expand it. And if you don't want these appearing as a local group, you can choose to ungroup all the different components. Now it looks like they were assembled in here uh, one by one. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.